Hi, my name is Roger Ellick. I'm the chapter chair of uh, SCORE here covering Essex, Hudson, and Union Counties. Uh, SCORE stands for Service Corps of Retired Executives, although we do have people that were uh, counselors that are available that are also currently working. We are primarily uh, retired people like myself. Uh, we take great pride in providing assistance to people that want to go in business and counseling them on how oh, the necessary things to go into business. SCORE is part of a national organization, and we have all, 377 offices throughout the United States, and our main office is located in Washington. We're also strongly affiliated with the SBA and work closely with them. Uh, in this office, we have been counseling people for many years, and what we, one of the things we do is we, people come in that want to go into business, and we tell them and advise them on what is necessary to be successful in running a business. The people, that, the counselors that are available are, have experience running businesses and are good business people. So when you come in and get advice from us, it is the best you can get. None finer. We have a whole diversity of people, counselors. The other great part about our counseling is it's free. We do not charge. It's a violation of our ethics to charge anybody for any counseling or to take advantage of the situation and become part of their business. We can't do that. Another thing that we do is we have library seminars. Currently, we have 22 library seminars scheduled in Essex and Hudson County, and Union Counties, um, where we run free uh, counseling seminars in the libraries. They generally run an hour to an hour and a half. And if you're interested in seeing what's available near you, just log on to scoremetro.org and take a look at the list of the libraries that are available. Further, we run workshops on the third Tuesday of every of six months. And again, you can get the dates off of our website. We will run a workshop in, in uh, the SBA office or in an aff aff affiliate's office. Right now, we're working very closely with Essex County College. We are also have expanded to go into Bloomfield College, and they are very interested in us running seminars. So we will, should be, you look forward to that. Uh, Bloomfield College will be scheduled sometime in February, our first seminar with them. Additionally, we published this book that you see over here, Starting and Managing Your Own Business. We use that book, and you can use that book. It gives you an excellent guide on how to start and manage your business. It has samples of all the forms in the back, the forms that you need to complete, and advises you on the necessary steps. Currently, we have 50 counselors in our chapter, and their diverse experience is just great, absolutely great. You can't buy this level of counseling that you get from us, no matter what the price. You can go to some, some uh, counseling organizations that may specialize in one thing or another. We have it all. And if we don't have it, by some strange chance, we'll find somebody in one of our other offices that can help you. I have counseled people as far west of here as Hawaii. I've had counselors, and finally when it got down to it, I got a hold of the local score office in Hawaii, and they then ran it. We've had numerous success stories. We have people in Princeton that have come into us and asked us to uh, assist them. Um, we're also working with a couple of other universities now and developing a program for wherein we're going to be uh, counseling their students and working with the students in the business college. This is all free. I can't overemphasize. I wish I knew about SCORE when I went into business. I would have been down here with bells on my toes trying to seeking the advice. I would have saved me a lot of headache. I hope I've answered your questions that you may have about SCORE. Later on, you'll be meeting other counselors and their diverse experience, and you'll see how good we are. I can sit here and talk all day, but until you come in and see us and meet with us, if you're interested in going to business, then you'll know where you are for real. We have 20 locations in the Essex, Hudson, and Union uh, 
counties for the counseling. We have the counseling in uh, one of our primary locations is located in Secaucus Library. The other one is in Westfield at the uh, Chamber of Commerce office. We do counseling throughout the area, but if you want a special assignment, and oh, by the way, you walk in. You don't need an appointment if you come to Newark. The other offices we ask for an appointment so we can make sure the right counselor is available. So here we are, take advantage of us, and we hope to hear from you soon. Everybody. My name is Richard Berwick, and I'm the marketing chair of Chapter 15 for SCORE. Uh, SCORE is a voluntary organization of mostly retired executives who have had uh, actually exceptional experience in particular fields. Well, what we do is this. We offer advice to uh, people who come in with particular business pro uh, problems or opportunities, and we also offer training sessions for people who want to get a knowledge enhancement of what business is all about and how to conduct a good business. So let's start with, uh, these are the products that we have. We essentially have two major products. These products are free, and these products also are service. One product is face-to-face -face counseling or electronic counseling that is done through uh, computers or telephone counseling. And these are people who have to know certain things about setting up a, a business, how to do it, where to do it, when to do it, and the cost to them. I'd like to just interrupt uh, my thought uh, sequence at the moment to tell you that Small business in the United States is very, very vital. About 96% of all businesses in the United States are small businesses. And more than 50% of the economy is dependent on small businesses, which are retail stores or people who have uh, 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 small manufacturing uh, operations, etc. When they come to us, many of them do not know the beginning of what to do. That is, how much money is needed, what are the legal factors involved, what are the investment factors involved. So this advice is given, as I mentioned, either through uh, computers, through internet, or by face-to-face, -face, or by telephone interviewing. Most of it is... Uh, face-to-face -face interviewing. The second thing we do is we give seminars, and we have a very large uh, number of activities here. We have a seminar, for example, generally on how to start your own business. It's about two hours. It can be uh, also four hours upon the option of where we're giving it. We also have one on uh, a business plan, a very vital element of anybody going into any business is to have a business plan. Another is legal factors. We also have one on uh, marketing in general, strategies, tactics, objectives. Anyway, what it does is, on one hand, it offers knowledge, basic knowledge to people or important knowledge. On the other hand, with the counseling, it is taking this knowledge and putting it into a context of the business applying this knowledge to their own particular uh, uh, business. So we may, not, we may talk about business planning, and then we also then invite people who come here or who have gone to the business plan seminar to bring in their own business plan. So now we personalize the activity and the recommendation. We see a lot of people, and I must confess to you uh, that uh, 
quite frequently, we provide an additional service. There are people who come in and do uh, or want to start their own business, but as you explore the situation and you explore the opportunity and the experience of the individual, the recommendation, tactfully as we can make it, would be please reconsider or please not do it. If they have the product to sell or the service to sell, we are happy to work with them not only in one session but multiple sessions on how to perfect this, put all these activities in a business plan and answer particular questions. It is a very interesting experience and I think the United States government, and we're part of the United States government through the SBA, is looking forward to any assistance at these difficult times to assist people in making a living and being successful in small businesses. Thank you very much. My name is Rick Greenbaum, and I'm a member of SCORE. Um, SCORE is an acronym for the Service Corps of Retired Executives. All the people here are people that have owned their own business or professionals. We've sold our businesses, we've gone through the entire business cycle, and we want to give back to the community. And this is not unusual. This uh, actually started back in the 50s when um, Pockets of people all over the country were getting together to do exactly what we're doing here. But the Small Business Administration saw what was happening. They organized it. They put it under some kind of a, a government um, line item budget. And um, now we have an organization of chapters and districts. And we have a complete organization working in conjunction with the Small Business Administration allows us to serve people who are trying to go into business and don't know exactly how to do it. So there are certain things that I found that have been very useful for all people that want to go into business. And the most important thing we find is that you need a, um, a type A personality. You have to have um, a tremendous desire focusing on the business itself, uh, forsaking all other things. We have a, a member here in with Buck Buchanan, who I work with on, on Tuesdays. He's on vacation right now. But he had actually started about four or five businesses. He's my a, a prototype for the, for the entrepreneurial uh, type of person. The last business he started, uh, he was well thought out, well financed, knew exactly what he wanted to do. But when he actually started the business, it didn't work out any, any of the ways he thought it would work. He actually, the first year, he lost like $150,000. Uh, he had to pull his kids out of school. He had to he would write a check every, every month for himself, put it in a drawer. And finally, he kept working on it, working on it, trying new things, and eventually the business clicked and ultimately became a very, very profitable business that he sold for lots and lots of money. He says it was the most rewarding thing and the most difficult thing that he ever ha happened to him in his entire life. So that's the kind of a spirit that you'll need to be an entrepreneur if you have that, that is the overwhelming thing that you need to be successful in business. The next thing you need to be successful in business is a business plan and a, and a good idea. It doesn't have to be a rocket scientist idea. It can be, it can be anything. But you have to be unique. It has to be something that you're passionate about, that you want to, that you want to bring to fruition. And um, I'll give you an example of, of a, um, when my daughter was going to college, she had a bright young man that was going to college with her that started, said he would start a, a business of moving people into, into Michigan. And he would uh, take their suitcases, pick them up, and bring them, bring them to, the, to the dorm room. So, so he just picked up everybody in the area and, and delivered all their suitcases. Everybody, we all paid him, and they did a nice job. The next year, he got all his friends to do the same thing. And so the next year, instead of one truck rolling in, there were about 30 trucks rolling in. Then after that, he got really organized, got the registrars, got the names and addresses of everybody that was going to school. 
And he had like a, a real business going there where they made significant sums of money. For the last year, he did the same thing and then sold it to an enterprising sophomore. Well, he did everything that you need to do in a business. He had a business idea, it was a unique concept, he uh, was organized, he made money on it, and he actually had an exit strategy on it, which is a very simple business plan, but a very successful one. So what we do here at SCORE is we review, help people write their own business plans and review those business plans to make sure that they have the following things. They have to make sure that they know who, who something about the person who's actually running the business, what does that person know about the business, what kind of capital does that person have, what kind of marketing strategy does that person have? How, what is his financial projections of what that business is going to do? And how is he going to pay back the bank? Um, we also help them decide upon what kind of a business organization that they're going to have. Do they have um, sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, LLC? We, we go talk about the benefits and the and the and the disadvantages of each one of those kind of uh, organizations and help, help them make the decision upon what's the best way to go. Lots of people need the financing and uh, it's very difficult in today's market, but it can be done because the Small Business Administration has programs available to minorities, to women, to veterans, where they help you go into business. They don't give you any money, but they will guarantee up to 90% of your loans for certain purposes. And you'll need some money of your own in the game. You don't need a well thought out business plan, but it is possible for people to go into business with the help of the Small Business Administration. Um, when I give library seminars, I kind of talk about my business a little bit. Not so much because it's completely relevant to anybody else's business, but basically the principles that I discovered in my business are relevant to everybody's business even though the businesses are, are slightly different. And it shows you how the business would sometimes change from the way it starts to the way it ends. So I'm not sure this is per relevant for this purposes, but let me just give you an idea of how I started in business, how I got my big break in business, how I got my big problem in business, how I changed directions in business, and how I, uh, and how I um, had an exit strategy to get out of the business. Um, I started in business, unlike most of the people that we meet, I had no desire to go into business. I wanted to be a tax lawyer. But my father was 43 years older than me and called me when I was in law school and asked me to help him out. My father had two businesses. The first was a 100-year-old food company that was, uh, had seen better times and was hemorrhaging money from all, all sorts. And he had a very tiny uh, food equipment business in New Jersey that he, he ran with his sister and was profitable, but had no expenses attached to it. And I soon realized that I wasn't smart enough to turn the big business around, but I had studied in law school mergers and acquisitions, and I came upon a plan for my dad. And we sold the big business uh, the, and recognized the capital loss on that business. We sold a valuable building in New York and recognized a big capital gain. We used the loss to offset the gain, so my father was able to retire from the business. And the business also had large operating losses. And we were able to have the little business that we owned in New Jersey take over the operating losses of the, of, the, of the large business. So we wound up with a very small business with a very large operating loss, which isn't worth anything. And they should turn it around and make profits in it and use up those losses. So for the next five years, I broke my back and made the profits to use up all those losses. Now my dad used to say, the reason for my success was that he was born first. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of truth in that. But I like to think that um, having recognized the problem, having devised a strategy for it and working, working it through and developing my own source of, uh, of capital in the business, I kind of helped out. So that was how I got started. Two years later, I got my big break. A guy comes in to see me from the Grand Union and says, can you put bakeries in each one of my uh, 250 supermarkets? And at that time, I had built the business up to two and, a, two and a half million dollars worth of sales, and this would have doubled my sales just on this one account by itself. So I've, it, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure out this is a very valuable account for me, and fortunately, I was able to work out a deal with him to be able to do this, but, um, and that, that deal allowed me to be able to 
build up an organization, put on salespeople to call on other supermarkets, put on controllers, put on more salespeople, put on more uh, service people, put on more uh, um, put profit sharing plans into, into effect. So instead of being the president and janitor the way I was before, I now became an, an operator of a, of a business. And the business went on for like about 20 years until we ran into the big problem. Now, I don't care what business you have, eventually you're going to run into the big problem. And how you deal with the big problem will determine whether you stay in business or you go, or you go by the wayside. Our business was run on a concept called recourse financing, which means that I would take a baker, I would sell him $100,000 worth of equipment, he would give me $50,000 down, he would finance the other $50,000 with a bank, the bank would give me the money, and they would also give me the difference between the interest I was charging him and what the bank was charging me. And if the, if the baker didn't make good on the loan, then I had to make good on the loan. So we never worried about that too much because we were in the used equipment business, and if a few people a year would go bad, we could always use the equipment up in our other business. But in 1990, we had a situation that was not unsimilar to the situation we have today, except today was 1990 on steroids. But in 1990, we had 16 people go broke in the first 16 months, the first 16 weeks of the year. And that was the straw that broke the camel's back. So we had a failed business strategy, and we couldn't continue on with that strategy. We had to change. And the way that we decided to do it was stop the recourse financing, give up the income that we had from the recourse financing, and replace it with a new business that was, that was appearing into the, uh, uh, the bagel business was just coming up along, and we had developed the first bagel machine. So we actually would advertise in the paper to get a room full of people, and we would teach them how to go into the bagel business. And to my great surprise, it seemed to work, because first we got one job a month, and two jobs a month, and one job a week, then all over the county, then all over the state, then all over the country, then all over the world. We really had a business. It was growing so fast that we actually had to change uh, we had to train the people more than we could do for this, this one little seminar. We actually, so I opened a, my own bagel shop. I would then take these people that would want to open their businesses. I would train them for a two-week period. They would give me like $2,000 a week, be my slave for a week, and I would run the regular bagel business as well. And it was a very profitable thing for me and for them as well. And we had about 150, 250 people through that that we actually put into business. And the business grew for another 10 years until... It, uh, it also crashed and burned, uh, as, the, as all businesses do. But by that time, I had lost the desire to be able to recreate myself for the third time. And remember, I said that's the most important thing that you need in business is that desire. So I had an exit strategy. I always had an exit strategy of how to get out of business. Now, you only can get out of business several ways. You either can give it to your children. You can sell it to your children. You can give it to your employees. You can sell it to your employees. You can sell it to an outsider. You can sell it to a competitor, you can sell it to a public company, or barring that, you're going to liquidate it or bankrupt it. So I sold it to a, a competitor of mine. On the way up, I was always very friendly with my competitors, even though I competed very strongly against them. But on the way up, I would buy their businesses, and on the way out, I was able to sell my business to my competitors. And then I worked for them and was unhappy with the way he ran my business. So I decided to, to go out and start a new business in my 60s. Um, and I went, now there's several kind of businesses that are out there today, in today's market. And the, one of the business I went into was what I call the licensing businesses. These are doctors, lawyers, financial planners, which I am. Uh, it could be anybody in the, um, it could be a teacher, it could be a social worker, anybody requires a license from the state. And you really have to go out and get those licenses. It's amazing how many people come into SCORE that want to go into the licensing businesses and aren't licensed. I find it inconceivable. Before I even went for my first job interview, I had my Series 7, my Series 66, all my insurance licenses, and I had gone and taken a, a CFP course, which was above and beyond. So when I went in to see my, my, my interviewer, he was a young man that was 35 years younger than me, and he didn't have a CFP license. So that impressed him, the fact that I went out and did more than I needed to do before I even went for my first interview. And uh, there are another other, other businesses out there today. The franchise businesses are very, very big. That's because somebody's really thought through the program, understands how these businesses work, have developed a method that people can make money on, and they can make money on it. 
but you have to be very careful of the franchise companies that you that you choose. If you if you take national companies, these are well established companies. If you, if you buy a McDonald's franchise, you don't have to worry too much about them being legitimate. But there are people out there that are illegitimate. You have to check them out. You need lawyers and attorneys to make sure that you're buying a good business. There's all kinds of internet businesses today. Uh, there are all kinds of service businesses today. Uh, people that uh, will wash your cars or wash your hair or, or take you to the airport, or whatever it is. It's a personal service business. You have to love doing it. Uh, it's, it's, it's an easy business. It doesn't require a lot of capital, but you have to devote the time, devote the energy to it, have a marketing plan, do it the same way as you would do any other kind of a business. And then the internet businesses are the, are the last way. And these are some of the, you don't need big stores anymore today. You can develop a website, Give yourself the credibility of a store, but you have to find, have people find you, which is the hard part of the website business. Just having a website doesn't mean anybody's going to find you. You have to do, really promote this to get yourself out there and let people see how you're going to do it. So that's basically what we do here. People will come into me. I will talk to them about their businesses. Because of my own business experience, I, there's no, nothing you can tell me that I haven't seen before. I had times when I was flush with money. I had times when I couldn't meet payroll. And uh, I know what, what the characteristics are of a successful business. And uh, I welcome to talk to anybody that, that wants to go into these kind of businesses.